Hello and welcome back to the third video to accompany my Smart Labs S1 and A1. Uh, on to discuss spectrum, um, spectrum view. And spectrum view is part of the real time mode in Smart. Real time mode in Smart, there are two views you really have to work with. One is spectrum, and you can see we're in spectrum right now. It says spectrum a couple places on the screen, and that's sort of the default way. The other way, to, the other big view is transfer function view or TF view. And down here, you can see there are a couple buttons here to go between spectrum view and transfer function view. Um, I vastly prefer and recommend you use the macro, which is S for spectrum view and T for transfer function and get familiar with moving back and forth between those. So starting on spectrum mode, you can see that there are um, three spectrum engines that were created when we configured in the previous video um, the audio interfaces. And so there's going to be an internal microphone for the computer and a couple associated with the audio interface. Now to configure these and kind of see the setup, a couple different ways you can get in and see the measurement config. Go up to config in the menu bar and go to measurement config. And this little window opens up from the right. You can close it with that little arrow there. You can also open, hit the, the toolbar tool button there and open it up and you can see measurement configuration spectrum there are three measurements here and inputs one and two are associated with my audio interface your audio interface will be different and measurement three is associated with the uh, macbook pro's internal microphone now let's rename that i'm gonna rename it by double clicked in there and you can see it's ready to name i'm gonna rename it built in mic and one thing is important in uh, Smart, you always do have to hit enter to make sure it's stored. And now you can see that we can really identify the difference between the audio interfaces to inputs and the built-in mic over here. We can close this. Um, I'm gonna follow the instructions carefully here to make sure I get through every step, make sure I don't miss anything important. Um, this, by the way, over here is called the control bar. So that's important to know this thing over on the right here is called control bar. And it's saying uh, press play on the built-in mics engine. So this is the play button here. And uh, whoa, we've got some spectrum mode there. And you can see it's responding to my voice or clapping or whatever. And I'm uh, suggesting at this point that you dive in and experiment with banding and averaging. It's pretty self-explanatory. Banding is the uh, how the frequency resolution. It's down here on the right. It's changed position from earlier versions of Smart. And uh, if I go down to octaves, you can see the resolution is very coarse. And if I go to no banding, it's very fine. So uh, depending on what you're trying to do, you're going to want to change this. In most uh, live sound front of house applications, probably want to leave it at um, 48th octave. But I do change resolution quite a bit in transfer um, function mode all the time. Uh, banding and averaging. Averaging's up here. It's changed a little bit in since the previous version of Smart as well. It's under averaging depth. And this will slow it down considerably. It averages um, more and more measurements together. The higher numbers will be slower and average more data together for a longer period of time. Obviously, there's more here to learn about it, but I just wanted to get you an intuitive sense of these two all-important smart parameters. Uh, at this point, uh, my instructions ask you to take a trace and you can either do that by hitting the capture button down here or just space bar works fine. And uh, I wanted to, you to name the trace of your first name dot Mike. So I'll do Eric dot Mike here. And uh, that data shows up over here in the data bar. Um, and it's kind of cool. You can uh, hide this live trace here and you can see the stored trace and lock how I can hide and open that up. And if I have uh, both the live and the stored trace together, I can focus and pick which one I want to see in front by clicking on it. Now the pink one, the stored trace is in front of the live trace, or now the live trace is in front of the stored trace. That's called focus, and that's an important thing to understand about the program. Um, what else? Oh. These colors are pretty bad, right? It's really hard to hear to see the difference between the pink and the pink. 
So you can change those. Um, I'm going to double click on the stored trace over here. Actually, not double click. That was the wrong thing to do. Um, I can either hit the I for here to get into the information window. You could also find it up here. Uh, get, I think it's in here somewhere, isn't it? Not, uh, yeah, yeah, it's not. Right click, I know, opens it up as well. Info, and we can change color. You can rename. You can do all kinds of things to it. And obviously, we want a color that is going to be salubrious. And so I'm going to use this green as the current color and apply it. And now you can see the two are very, very different. And now it'll be easier for you to see focus. Okay. So with that done and you've played with, um, I'm going to make sure I got everything here. Oh, nope. one other important thing before we take a screenshot. Uh, let's get... Uh, double pane going on here. So under view, set the program to double pane. And uh, this is double pane down here. Now it's not working right now. Sometimes I have to start and stop. There we go. Start and stop the engine for a moment with the play button. And now you can see the spectrograph, which shows frequencies from left to right, just like you see above here in the RTA. But it, uh, loudness is brightness. Um, I can adjust these little threshold markers here, and you can better control what loud and soft is going to do. And so this is a very important, this is kind of a default front of house view for smart where you can see real time in RTA above and real time in spectrograph. And spectrograph's great because you can actually use your arrow keys to rewind back and put your cursor on a free feedback and see above what the frequency of the feedback is. So highly effective tool there spectrograph is and really makes smart very useful. Okay, for this uh, for this lab here with all of this stuff going, let's take a screenshot to turn in for your assignment. So uh, take a screenshot of all this, and I want you to name the screenshot when you turn in your first name. I'm uh, sorry. Uh, you want to have the stored trace, the live, the spectrograph all going at the same time, and name your screenshot your first name spectrum. So take a good, good screenshot of the whole thing and turn that in called your first name dot spectrum. Okay, end of the video. Thank you very much.